Why? Because the just shall live by faith. Two truths concerning faith giving being based upon the word of God. We need to grasp these two truths. Number one, you'll never get a word from God if you neglect the word of God. If you neglect to stay in the scriptures, you will never hear God speak. There is no reason. We have a more sure word of prophecy now. We're not talking Old Testament. We're not talking about before we had the Bible. You have the Bible, you have it in your language, and you say, well, God's not speaking to me. God's not clearly talking to me. Or I've got this. Let me say, you say you've got a word from God. You've been staying out of the Scriptures. You did not get a word from God. You got a word from self. You stirred up your own self to think God said something. You'll never get a word from God. If you never, if you neglect the word of God. Many in modern Christianity refuse to listen to preaching and never, hardly ever, uh, read the scriptures, but they say they pray and God speaks to them. Not so. Not so. I trove not to sound scriptural here. I trove not. You may be spiritually motivated, let me say that, without being scripturally minded, if you do that. But the Spirit is speaking is not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, when you have the Word of God, if you neglect the Word of God, then you will not hear a word from God. You know what it tell you? Repent. Repent. Get into Scriptures. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. He'll say they search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. You say, I need a word from God in this situation. Get in the word of God if you want a word from God. I am not saying, as some would say, that the only time God ever speaks is in the Bible. Because, can I tell you this? Then I would never be able to tell you that God will tell you how much to give. Because he never says in the Bible, give this amount. Or that amount. But he does say he loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, I can give you some principles of scriptures. From, but he does not say uh, give 15, 20%. He does not say give $30 or $50 or $100 a month. He doesn't say that. I don't find it in the scriptures. But can I say if you stay out of the scriptures, you'll never hear the word, a word from God. If you, never, if you neglect the word of God. Remember the word that I serve upon which thou was called to me not. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light in my path. Jeremiah said, Thy word were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoice of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. The word of God. Psalm or Proverbs 6 says, Commandment is the lamp, and the law is light. Number two thing, number one, if you'll never get a word from God if you neglect the word of God. Number two, if you ever get a word from God, you'll have hope. If you ever get a word from God, you will have hope. Remember the word that I served upon which thou has caused me to hope. As we study our Bibles in, in the history of Christianity, we find a hope-filled people, though often in hopeless situations. They were looking beyond themselves. Abraham was looking for a child to be born unto him, even though he was past years. Oh, uh, and Sarah was beyond the way of women. Uh, Moses was looking for a, a city, who, and Abraham was looking for a city whose maker and builder was God. Even though they did not end up with that promise in their own lifetime, in their own life, they saw it afar off and they followed that. Hallelujah. They lived by faith. We could not only find faith living is living and based upon the word of God. But secondly, we find faith living is living built upon the work of hope. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, he said the city, he was in the city of Ziglag and it was burnt. His family were taken captive. And David was greatly distressed. 
for the people spake of, of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. There was a hope that David had. Let me say two wives. Now, that, let me say that, that that's not right, but he had two wives, and both of them were taken captive. They were gone. He, all of his fortune, all of his, everything he had was gone. But David lived a life by faith. He said he encouraged himself, and the Lord is God. Why? Because God had promised him, you'll be a king one day. He had anointed him to be king. He wasn't king yet. He was still wandering. Saul was still alive. David was still struggling. And before the families were returned and the city was rebuilt and everything was restored, David was restored because of his work of hope. In the book of Romans, chapter 15, and verse number 4, the statement is made, For whatsoever things are written for time are written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the Scriptures we might have hope. Titus tells us looking for that blessed hope. There is a work of hope. First Peter said, "Work wherefore gird through the wind of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of the grace for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the uh, form of lust." Uh, let me say this: in your ignorance, but as He which is called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. What do you say? Because you have a hope. Hope brings holiness. When you find yourself hopeless, you'll try to find any way of getting the problem resolved. And you say, man, if God's not going to provide, I've got to provide for myself. If God's not going to take care of me, I've got to take care of myself. But can I say, David encouraged himself and the Lord is God. Uh, Abraham was looking for a city whose maker and builder was God. Uh, Moses was leading the people because God had told him to lead them to the promised land. I am telling you, they had hope. He said, but I don't have any hope. Life's falling apart for me. Can I say, encourage yourself in the Lord your God. He'll lead you in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. He'll guide you. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I just want us to know it's a work of hope from faith to blood faith. There is a, it's based on the Word. It's built on a, a, a God. It's built on a work of hope and it's blessed by the wonderful helps. From faith to faith. Now let me just say this. There's saving faith. The righteousness of God. It's called justification by faith. The help that we have is a, a righteous position that was provided for us. In the book of Romans, we're, we're back in our context. Uh, the righteousness of God is revealed. Uh, verse number 17. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith uh, to faith. The rights of God is revealed. The rights of God is required. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And the rights of God is rewarded. How is it rewarded? Chapter 3 and verse number 22. He makes the statement. In uh, verse 22, he says, Even the rights of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ upon all, unto all and upon all them, that by or that believe. Chapter 4, he tells us in verses 3 through 5. In chapter 4 and 3 through 5, he says, For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God was counting him for righteous. Now to him that worked is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. By faith. Jesus Christ becomes our righteousness. We have a righteous position in Christ. He saved us, redeemed us from corruption. That just shall live by faith. 
He saved us. But not only do we find the help of the righteous position based upon uh, salvation, but we find it based upon sanctification. We have this position, chapter 5 tells us, this thing of sanctification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our position. Does that not give you hope? That you have a position in Christ? We have a position. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now. That's not future tense. He's made us to sit together in Christ Jesus. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now. The help of a righteous position is provided. And then we can find the help of a, a relevant power that's pondered. Two powers I see that we have. We have the power of the gospel. Verse number 16 of chapter 1 in the book of Romans. And uh, where I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it is the power of God and the salvation of everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It's the power. There's a relevant power that we have. We have a help because we have a relevant power. The gospel, the good news. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him. Seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. He's our holy hope. Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's the gospel. That's good news. If Christ in you was only going to uh, get you out of hell and not bring you all the way to glory, what good is that? To burn in this earth? Tell the Jehovah's Witness, you can sit there and say, Bleh, we're going to heaven for eternity. Y'all might get annihilated, but we're going to heaven for eternity. We'll never be with the Lord. Hallelujah. We have eternal hope. I'm looking forward to it. It's the power of the gospel, the good news. Why? Because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharpening to edge sword. Oh, he gives us a hope. The help of the relevant power that's pondered. Not only find the gospel, we find grace. The power of grace. Chapter 5, and verse number 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We got grace. We have access in our prayer life. We have access by grace. We can go boldly to the throne of grace where we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. How come we got access by grace? It's grace that taught my heart to fear. Grace my fears relieved. I mean, it's all by grace. From faith, saving faith, the sanctifying faith. And it's satisfying grace or faith. Because we have the help of a righteous position that's provided, of a relevant power that can be pondered, and the help of a real person. Oh, hallelujah. A real person. You say, what real person are you talking about? Well, he's provided a real person. Jesus paid it all. All that he might. Oh, sin and death the crimson stain. But he washed in the white as snow. We have Christ by faith. The real person of Christ by faith. Romans chapter 5 in verse 6, I believe it is. He tells us, uh, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for a good, or for a good man someone even dare to die. But God has been his love toward us, and now we're yet sinners. Christ died for us. We have Christ. We have, this, we have the Spirit of Christ. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, a real person who died for our sins, who was made to be sin for us. If you know he knew no sin, and we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And he ever lived to make intercession for us. We have access by grace into, because of Christ. The pain that was made by Christ, by faith, Jesus paid it all. We have the, the Christ by faith and the spirit of faith which is given unto us. Chapter 5 in verse number 5 
He said, and hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Like I said just a moment ago in Romans 8 verse number 9, have any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He's living in you. He's living in you. A real person. How can somebody that big and somebody this small and not do something? He ought to be showing up somewhere. I just want you to understand the just to live by faith from faith to faith. All the way through, it's all by faith. We're led by the Spirit. Chapter 8, verse number 14. And love is shed abroad by the Spirit. We're led in the prayers of faith. And we're led in the practices of faith. So I don't believe we're led in our prayers. Oh, the Spirit itself makes us groanings which cannot be uttered. Does it not tell us that in the book of Romans? In the book of Romans chapter 8, we will find, I believe it's in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as God, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which not, cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. A help. He's a real person. The help of a real person is spirit making intercession for us. I will tell you this in our prayer life. We are led by the Spirit. We are led by the Spirit in the practices of faith. The just shall live by faith. He leads us. Oh, blessed God. He leads us. I just want you to understand a few simple truths. The just shall live by faith. You say it starts out by faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And it ends up by faith. He brings us all the way through. We find our salvation or the justification by faith. We will find our sanctification in faith. And as we find our sanctification in faith, we'll find the glorification of faith. God will be justified in His people. For whom He did for none, then He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. That He might be the firstborn among many brethren. And whom He did predestinate, then He also called. And whom He called, then He also justified. And whom He justified, then He also glorified. That justification there is not the justification by faith. That's chapter 4. That justification there is the justification in faith. Because God has justified Himself and justified us as His people. All the way to glorification. He's done a work in you. And He's doing a work in you. Conforming us to the image of Christ. I will tell you this, the just shall live by faith. And then let me say this, if the just live by faith, just so we can get back to the missions idea, the just live by faith. They first gave their own sins unto the Lord. <clears throat> Before they gave their substance, they gave of their sin. My friend, have you yielded yourself? Unto God in your members as instruments of righteousness. Unto God. As those that are alive <clears throat> from the dead. From faith to faith. Father, I pray you help us. 